Melbourne is growing and it's growing fast. By 2026, the population of Melbourne is projected to hit 5 million people. Historically, Melbourne has pushed outwards and created new suburbs to house its growing population. But when most of the growth of a city happens at its fringes, it leads to urban sprawl, and that brings some serious challenges and pressures. Expanding the limits of the city means destroying important farmland, forest and open green space. Now this is all happening quite far away, so what's it got to do with you? A lot, as it turns out. We all pay for this urban sprawl through increased costs and taxes. It's very expensive for governments to build new roads, schools and hospitals. It also costs a lot to put in new services like water, gas, electricity and sewerage. There's little in the way of public transport in these areas which leaves residents dependent on their cars to get around. And so ever growing numbers of people are driving from the outer suburbs towards the city to access their jobs and the services they need. And they're travelling through suburbs close to the city, just like yours. And that's leading to increased traffic congestion and pollution. The reality is, if you live anywhere in Melbourne, this affects you. Our state governments have grappled with this challenge for quite some time and both sides of politics have come to the same conclusion. Melbourne can't keep spreading forever. Now there is a place for new suburbs, but the answer to this challenge lies in other approaches too. Things like renewing old brownfield sites like Fisherman's Bend, as well as continuing to focus on building up population and housing density in and around Melbourne's established centres. These inner urban centres, which were nominated by the state government, are busy, vibrant hubs with shops, services and good access to public transport. Now that makes these areas very appealing to a growing number of people who want to be able to cycle or walk to the things they need in their local community and rely less on cars. It also makes these areas good locations to have a diverse mix of housing to accommodate population growth. As the population ages and family sizes get smaller, there's more and more demand for smaller homes. Older retired residents wanting to downsize, couples without children, or smaller families and young people trying to break into the housing market. It's a real concern for me that my children won't be able to be located in such a convenient area close to the city because they won't be able to afford the housing stock that's in Mooney Valley. So I think it's really important that we have a diversity of housing stock, some apartments, some low maintenance and lower cost places that they may be able to rent or you know one day hopefully buy to start off on the housing ladder because they won't be able to afford the housing stock that's here now. The idea of these centres is to have enough people living in and around an area to make it a viable centre, with successful businesses generating local jobs and attracting more services, better public transport and improved community facilities. At a local level, it's up to councils to make sure that these centres achieve all the objectives set by the state government, as well as ensuring that these centres are places people want to live and feel a sense of community. Melbourne's population will continue to increase, there is no doubt about it, and inner urban areas like Mooney Valley will continue to face the challenge of accommodating some of that growth. The key is to try to manage the growth locally in a planned way, and councils do this by developing long-term strategies like structure plans. Now, without robust plans, there's the potential for this growth and development to happen in an ad hoc way. Change is not easy, and this is a challenging process. 
but it's one that needs to happen if we want our city to be a great place to live, work and visit in the future.